This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about how multisig can help to make all Bitcoiners safer. And if you don't know what multisig is, don't worry about that. I'll be explaining that as part of this video. So the preface to this, I'm going to be talking about something that's a little bit complicated, especially to new Bitcoiners, which is multisig. And so I want to preface this video by saying, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. And don't let this video turn you off away from single SIG or from holding your Bitcoin on a hardware wallet, because the absolutely worst thing that you can do is to leave your Bitcoin on an exchange or on an app. So don't let this video be an excuse not to take action there and to continue to leave your Bitcoin on an exchange. This is actually how most people have lost their Bitcoin. They haven't lost it through self-custody, but they've lost it by leading it, leaving it on Mt. Gox or FTX or BlockFi or any of these long history of sad exchange collapses. I've covered FTX extensively on this channel, but I'll link to this for future viewers of this video in a few years who've forgotten about FTX and BlockFi. The key principle, as always, is not your keys, not your coins, as a lot of us has been, have been through this bear market and seen the destruction as exchanges go under. This is really imprinted very clearly in our brains, but again, we'll have a bull cycle. People will forget this, this, and so I want to make sure that people remember this if you're viewing this later in time. If you need to ask permission to move your Bitcoin, that Bitcoin doesn't really belong to you. It's not being treated the way that Bitcoin should as a bearer asset where you control the private keys and you can decide yourself how to send and spend it. If your Bitcoin is sitting on FTX or BlockFi or Coinbase or Kraken, even on an exchange that hasn't collapsed, you need to ask their permission to use it. And if there were ever a government crackdown or corruption at the exchange or something like this, you wouldn't be able to access your Bitcoin when you first when you most needed it. So it's very important, withdraw your Bitcoin from the exchange and hold it on a hardware wallet where you control the private keys. This is what's called cold storage. It's also called single sig, which is short for sing single signature. I recommend the Blockstream Jade hardware wallet. I'm not being compensated or paid in any way by any of these companies that I recommend. I'm just a happy customer of Blockstream Jade as well as cold, cold card. Cold card is a little bit more expensive. Blockstream Jade is still a very good product for the entry user. The products I would avoid, I would avoid Trezor. I'll link to this video about Trezor's adopting Wasabi and their surveillance company for their coin join. I'll link to that in the description notes below. I don't like Ledger. A lot of people ask me because their, their wallets use closed source firmware, so they're not open source. They can't be verified by everyone. That's the short the short version of it. So stick to Blockstream Jade, stick to, stick to cold card, in my opinion. Again, taking your Bitcoin off an exchange and holding it on a hardware wallet is a no-brainer. So I don't want this video to be an excuse for anyone to leave their Bitcoin on an exchange. So now let's talk about second order risks. And these are less important, but you first have to you first have to make the leap of putting your your bitcoin on a hardware wallet and then you can you can consider these second order risks and second order effects the problem with having a hardware wallet is someone can break into your house and try to take your hardware wallet or your recovery seed which is just the 12 or 24 word backup these are what are called five dollar wrench attacks someone goes to home depot buys a wrench comes to your house because they know you're a bitcoiner and they say give me your bitcoin or you're gonna get whacked in the head this is highly unlikely for most people, especially if you don't walk around wearing a Bitcoin baseball cap or a Bitcoin t-shirt, or you don't have a Bitcoin YouTube channel. Most people, you probably shouldn't tell people that you own Bitcoin apart from very close family and friends. However, as one Bitcoin approaches a million dollars and beyond, we should expect attacks like this to increase. So I'm really looking forward and trying to skate to where the puck is going to be. So what's an easy solution or deterrent to this problem where we have a lot of Bitcoiners who bought Bitcoin when it was at 28,000 or wherever it is right now, and it's now worth a million dollars. Even if they bought a 10th of a Bitcoin, that'll still be incredibly significant money. And so there'll be this incentive for thieves to break into people's houses. So what's a, what's a way of deterring thieves? I would say that it's teaching more Bitcoiners about multi-sig cold storage solutions. And you're gonna see why this is a solution to home robberies. So single SIG is just using a single hardware wallet where you only need one signature to move your Bitcoin. Multi-SIG is where you use, you need multiple signatures to move your Bitcoin. These can be software wallets, hot wallets, but they're usually cold wallets like hardware wallets. So it, for example, in a two of three multi-SIG, you would have three hardware wallets and you would need two out of those three hardware wallets to make a Bitcoin transaction, to sign a Bitcoin transaction, to move your Bitcoin. And if you only had one of those hardware wallets, you would not be able to move 
the Bitcoin. And if a thief had just one of those hardware wallets, he or she would not be able to move the Bitcoin. Now, each of these hardware wallets itself will have its own 12 or 24 word recovery seed backup in case the hardware wallet itself is damaged or destroyed. So you don't have to worry about the hardware wallets uh, breaking down over time because there is this mechanism for backing them up. So here's the conclusion. If we normalize multi-sig among Bitcoiners, thieves will begin to realize that breaking into Bitcoiners' homes is a complete waste of time. And at some point, I expect almost every American, every European, every Canadian, everyone to everyone in the global south, everyone everywhere to be a Bitcoiner. And so thieves will begin to realize that breaking into a Bitcoiner's home is a complete waste of time because finding one hardware wallet out of three hardware wallets gets you nothing if you're a thief. Multisig also helps to mitigate it against supply chain attacks as well, especially if you use hardware wallets from multiple vendors. So if you're doing two out of three multisig, you'd probably want these hardware wallets to be from two or three different manufacturers. So you could use a Blockstream Jade, a cold card, maybe you'd use a Trezor or Ledger. You could also build your own hardware wallet as well. The problem with using single sig, another problem is what we call supply chain attacks. Here's a, an example I'll link to in the description notes below of fake Trezors that were bought not from the company itself, but from a third party who had replaced the hardware or software in there. So when someone put some Bitcoin on there, it was immediately swiped. Actually, this was a more sophisticated attack where the attacker waited about 30 days to move the Bitcoin. So they gave the illusion of comfort to the Trezor hardware wallet owner before they stole the Bitcoin. So it's very important when you are buying a hardware wallet, the first step is you definitely buy it directly from the company itself. You buy it directly from Blockstream. You buy it directly from Cold Card or directly from Trezor. You don't buy it on Amazon from a third party seller. So this is a great thing about multi-sig. If a thief breaks into your house and you only have one hardware wallet there out of three, they can't take your Bitcoin. And also if you load all of your Bitcoin into a multi-sig solution, it's much safer than holding, loading it all onto a single hardware wallet that may have been uh, the victim of a very sophisticated supply chain attack as happened with these treasures. So what do you do? How do you store these three hardware wallets if you're doing two out of three multi-sig, which is probably the most common? You can store one hardware wallet in your house. That makes sense. Where do you store the second and third hardware wallets? You can keep them in a different location from your house. So for example, you could consider exchanging hardware wallets with a trusted relative or neighbor or friend who's also a Bitcoiner. They would hold your hardware wallet number two while you would hold their hardware wallet number two. You could also have multiple hardware wallets that each contain this exact same private keys. So you could, you could have hardware wallet number two with a trusted relative and then another hardware wallet that had the same recovery seat on it, the same private keys on it with a trusted friend. You don't want to do too much of this because then you'll have these wallets in so many different places and you might not be able to keep track of them. But this is one solution. You can also store your three hardware wallets in different geographical locations. Uh, the only place I would suggest maybe not doing this is putting it in a bank vault because in a real crisis, you might not be able to get into the bank. It's okay to put a hardware wallet in there if you're using multi-sig, as long as you understand that in a real crisis, you might not be able to get to it. So you're wondering how to set up multi-sig for yourself. I would say the easiest way is to use a collaborative custody solution like Casa or Unchained. I used to recommend Casa. I can't recommend them anymore, unfortunately. They are founded by a really good guy, Jameson Lopp, who's really done a lot for Bitcoin. And uh, I admire his work, certainly. But unfortunately, sometime last year, about five months ago, Casa added support for Ethereum. I don't know. I don't know anything behind the scenes here. I don't know if James Jameson, I assume he was against this and some of his VC backers pushed it through. But I think this is a very bad thing to do, especially because Ethereum is an attack vector on Bitcoin. Ethereum has been used to push proof of stake, to push a lot of energy FUD. Vitalik came up with the idea of Bitcoin maxis, that, that phrasing, etc. So Ethereum really is an enemy of Bitcoin and why a company that used to be a Bitcoin only company would offer cold storage support for Ethereum is beyond me, especially when it's started by a, a really serious OG Bitcoiner like Jameson Lopp. So I'll link to this in the description notes below that talks about Ethereum's attack, uh, basically Ethereum's communities attack, all these fa fairly wealthy people in Ethereum funding attacks, as well as Ethereum and some of the related companies collaborating with governments to put out CBDCs. This is why you should not be offering support for Ethereum if you're offering multi-sig cold storage for Bitcoin. And that's why I can no longer recommend 
CASA. So that leaves us with really only one multi-sig collaborative custody company, which is Unchained. I'm a big fan of them. They seem to uh, have some great people. Parker Lewis is over there writing his amazing essays. And so um, this would be the solution if you want to do collaborative custody. You don't need to use one of these companies to do multi-sig. There are ways of doing it yourself. Um, I would say, actually, I should rewind and say I consider Unchained highly reliable. And the way it works in one of their multi-sig vaults is they hold one key and you hold two keys so that they can never steal or freeze your Bitcoin. They're not really holding custody of your Bitcoin and they can't take your Bitcoin even if the government, if the US government or some other government asks them to because it requires you're holding two of the two of the three keys. They only have one key. The, th the reason, the main reason not to use Unchained is if you don't want to leak privacy to them. They can help you set stuff up. They can hold your hand because multi-sig can be a little bit complicated. So it might make sense, but I don't think you can use them in a non-KYC manner. I think you have to disclose uh, a lot of your identity is what I understand by talking to other people. If that's not, if that's no longer true, you can leave a note in the description notes below. This is, if you're really worried about privacy, you can consider building your own multi-sig Bitcoin fault. And this is one of the things I do teach in my paid Bitcoin course. I have two courses, uh, two lectures on this, uh, the ultimate Bitcoin storage solution, do it yourself multi-vendor. So using hardware wallets from multi, multiple vendors, multi-vendor, multi-sig. And it's about an hour of lectures just on that in addition to the other lectures in here. But if you want more handholding and you want to be with a, a very legit company, I would also recommend Unchained. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.